So our task here as a final exercise is to write a function that takes a set of numbers as its input and normalize this, these functions into the range of 0 and 1. Now there is this, um, this equation that you might fi find in the internet and the um, task is now to implement this in R. Um, just keep in mind there are two functions, min and max, that might be useful in this context. And once you did it, a useful add-on uh, would be to document this function, which make, would make it uh, easier for, for others to use and also for you to remember its function. Okay, so our task is to write a function that takes as an input a vector of numbers and then normalizes these numbers into the range of 0 and 1. And um, in the um, slides, we've been provided with a function that um, actually does so. So um, if we want to write a function, we first have uh, to think about a proper name. In this case, call it, I don't know, norm function. Then we use the association operator. We call the function function. To define our function, we need to think about the arguments to be used in our function. So in this case, let's call it, I don't know, x back uh, for, 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 for the vector. Um, then we open the curly brackets, and then we can start thinking about the function body to be defined. Um, so in case you develop more complex functions, it might be better to think about a strategy of how to actually implement the problem before putting it into, into the actual, actual function. So what I do, it's probably not the absolute best way to do it, but I've been quite successful in doing so, to think about the, the different steps in develop, de developing the overall um, uh, solution to the problem. So if we look at the equation, first thing uh, we need to implement the, um, the result is actually to compute the minimum and the maximum value of this vector. We could think about this like um, uh, an object called min value of this vector and um, to, to compute it we can use the function min uh, that is provided by R. Uh, um, and we can then do something where we need to be very careful about. So we take the name of the argument, put it out of the function, define it here um, as a vector um, that we use as a running example. And then we implement this part of our solution. Now, so the min value here is one, so we see, okay, that actually works. So what we also need is we need the max value, and the max value can be computed by the function maximum. Uh, um, so let's implement this and check whether it actually works. So we actually made progress in the sense that um, we um, now were able to compute the minimum and the maximum value of, of, um, of this vector. And then if we look here at the upper part of the fraction, what we do need to do is uh, we need to subtract the, um, the minimum value for, of, from each element of this vector. Uh, so um, we could think about a variable frac1 um, where we subtract uh, the minimum value from each part of this vector. Uh, so we could think of something like this. Uh, this is how we can do that by in R. Remember the concept of vectorization. And then we can actually verify that this is um, actually what has happened here. So we now actually made a first important um, intermediate step in um, coming up with an overall solution. So what we can now do is we can remove this here from outside the function and we can put it into the function and say, okay, as, a, as an intermediate uh, solution, we want this to be returned. Huh? So it's a good idea then to, to basically remove everything here in the example um, to define our function and um, to call it with our um, example vector. Uh, um, so maybe it's a good idea to call it here just example vector. It was, uh, I think it was just this one. And uh, then just see whether this function actually does as we intended. So now we see, okay, um, there was a problem. Uh, okay, just uh, misspelled it. So the function here does what it uh, what it uh, was intended to do. Uh, 
Usually when you do these examples, I usually recommend you to actually clear um, the, the environment such that you are not going to be confused with the stuff that you've defined outside the function. So now we see our environment is empty. If we now execute everything, it still works. So we can now then make further, further progress in actually also adding the second part um, of the um, uh, of the solution. So in this case here, we actually need um, the second part of the fraction, um, and that is actually just the max value um, minus the um, the min value of the um, of the example vector. Huh? So here um, we can again copy this out of the function need to make sure that here we use the example vector because we are now operating outside the function body. Um, if we execute this and we see, okay, this is the result. Um, that makes sense. We can verify this um, by subtracting four minus one or three. Okay, that, that makes a lot of sense. So it seems to be correct what, is, what we've been doing here. So we can actually um, put it into our function and then also add the overall result, which is um, in this case here just the uh, fraction uh, frac1 divided by frac2. And let us first verify again whether the function um, gives us the same result as our uh, manual computation down there, so it does so. So we can now say, okay, the function should really um, return the overall result and redefine the function and then check, okay, does the function actually return something we would expect? Well, yes, the function here actually normalizes everything into the range of, of a zero to, to one. In this case, we can here remove our, our sketches, so to speak. It's a good idea to restart the environment to make sure everything we have defined has been removed and we get a clean start. So we make sure uh, we test our function again. And yes, the result is, um, is still uh, the one that we would expect. We could also try this with um, other cases. It, uh, it still works. Yeah. Everyone needs to think a little bit about um, his or her own best strategy in developing functions. So this thing of copy pasting from within without the, um, uh, the function body is, is one way to do it. It's probably not the cleanest way and especially when you enter more complex um, problems to be solved you might have to think about something more professional but for the start I guess um, this is a useful way of, of going about um, developing your own functions. Now then there was um, basically the add-on um, add task that was to document your function. So in, in our case, we can document the function by saying, okay, um, first of all, thinking about a, a plain, a short title in plain English here, um, we could say, okay, this function normalizes um, a vector into the 0, 1 range. Um, this function takes uh, one argument as an input, uh, which is called x vector. Um, it's a vector of numbers. Um, the function returns um, something, um, uh, a vector with uh, numbers being normalized into the 0, 1 range. Um, and uh, we can then also think about a, a proper, proper text uh, that actually explains uh, what the function does um, in more detail. Um, we could also add some, some cautions such that, uh, for example, um, that this function does not yet handle vectors with missing values, etc., etc. Um, can can think about a, a more extensive text that um, that explains what the function um, does. So